welcome to the latest in our series of live careers webinars, which today will focus on careers in bricklaying. So just to give you a bit of context, this webinar is brought to you by the Hertfordshire Opportunities Portal. That's hot and on your screen at the moment. You will see our website and some of our social media handles as well. It's a website that we very much encourage any students or young people, particularly those of you in Hertfordshire, to have a look at. There's a whole host of information about a variety of different careers. And the video that we record today, so those of you that are watching this live, obviously, well done to you for coming in from school and, and turning this webinar on. You will have the opportunity to ask questions directly to our panelists who are with us today, who I'll introduce very shortly. Um, those of you that are watching this as a recording, then if you don't have that opportunity to interact live, but if there are any questions you want to ask, please do so. So um, the purpose of today's webinar is just to promote to you the career of bricklaying and some of the qualifications and some of the courses that you may well want to find out a little bit more about. So we're going to talk about what a bricklayer does, how to get onto the courses, um, and what progression routes you may well have as a bricklayer going forwards. So just to reassure you a bit of housekeeping, first of all, we can't see or hear any of you that are in the audience at the moment, but hopefully you can see and hear us. But you do have the opportunity to ask questions. And the way that you do that is on your dashboard, you'll see there's a questions tab. If you click on that, that will open out a text box. And in the text box, you can type in your question. It will only be visible to me. And then I can pass it on to uh, one of our panelists to answer that question for you. So really do encourage you to use that opportunity today. You've done so well to log on to this webinar. Um, use the opportunity to ask any questions or anything you're uncertain about so we can make sure that you're really, really well informed about the next steps that you might want to take. So as, to, as I said, today's session is about careers in bricklaying and we have a fabulous panel for you today who are going to share their insights um, and their experiences with you. So I'm going to ask each of them in turn just to say a little bit about themselves so you know who they are. So first of all, good afternoon to Jack Dawson. Good afternoon, Gareth, and welcome to everyone. Uh, my name's Jack Dawson, as Gareth said. Um, I am the Programme Manager for Brickwork at Hartford Regional College. Um, I deliver both to full-time learners at level one and level two and apprentices up to level three. Okay. Thank you. And then, well, if you, if you want to introduce your students, that's Apprentice, who's with us today as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, Dan, you want to introduce yourself? How are you doing, everyone? My name's Dan, and I'm an apprentice at the College of Harper Regional, and I'll work for Winterfell Brickwork. Okay, thank you very much. And we, we are going to find out a little bit more about that course that you're doing, Dan, and what you enjoy about that. Let me also introduce Heidi to us as well. Um, good afternoon, Heidi. Hello, I'm Heidi and I work for Winchmore Brickwork. So I do the other side of what Jack and Dan does, employing the apprentices and managing them whilst they're with us. Okay, thank you, Heidi. So you've got a really good range here that you've got someone who's a current student and apprentice at college. You've got his tutor and you've also got his employer who's here with us as well and they can add their perspective to what they look for when recruiting someone. So what I'd like to do first of all then is just have a conversation with Dan primarily I guess to find out what a bricklayer actually does. So Dan can you tell us what is your what does an average week look like for you? How long are you at college? How long are you working? What do those two look like? Uh, yeah well I'm at college one day a week and that's where um, I do my most of my training and uh, paperwork side of my apprenticeship because it's not all hands on on site. You do need to do some paperwork and also theory lessons. Um, my average week looks like, well, I'll be honest, every day is different. I don't work on this in the same place every day on site. I'll be moved about. But that's probably one of the things I enjoy as well because you, I'm not always in the same place. It's always a different sort of environment. Even though it's on the same site, it is a different environment all over the site um at the start of the day my, well each day is you speak to your foreman so that's the super, uh, top supervisor on site and you find out where you're going to be working what they want done and what level they want it done at and it, it's your task for that day to basically uh, support the needs of what your supervisor wants and what he finds uh, good to do um other things include that um, 
is that at the end of the working week, you do a site tidy up and that makes sure the site's all clean and tidy and all the work has been covered up. Because if sometimes if the work's not covered up, it leads to the work not being uh, coming out as well as it should do. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's okay. basically it. Well, there's a couple of questions I've got for you. So you said at the start of the day, typically, when is the start of the day for you? What time? <laughs> start of the day, well, I've got to be on site before 7.30 because I start work at 7.30. So I get there about seven o'clock, so I can get a bit of breakfast. So I'm ready for the day. Yeah. Okay. And then take us back. So what time does your alarm clock go? My alarm clock about five o'clock, five fifteen. Okay. Five fifteen, I get up, ready to go because I've got to travel to work. And like I said, I like getting to work with a bit of time to spare, so I can chill out, have have a tea, get some breakfast. So I'm ready, energized for the day. Yeah, okay. Now you said there's potentially lots of different sites that you might be working on. How far might you have to travel to those, or are they all fairly local to you? Uh, that depends. At the moment, I'm working in um, Upton Park, where the old West Ham Stadium used to be, and that takes about 45 minutes uh, and up to an hour tops, but most of the sites are uh, pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Well, in fact, let me pass this question to Heidi, who I know was nervous that I was going to ask her a question that she hadn't prepared for. Um, from from Winchmore's perspective, how many jobs do you have going up at one time? And do you try and make sure that all of your staff can access those sites, that they're fit, is we, the location they can get to? Yeah, we do. We, I mean, at any one time, we could have up to 25 jobs, say. But in terms of making sure people are located in the right area to get to their job we will always check say go on google maps check the distance check how long it's going to take them to get there because we don't want people traveling hours when we've got people close to the job basically and especially with our apprentices i think we make a lot of effort to try and get them as close to where they live as possible especially when they're going to college because obviously we don't want them traveling three for two three hours of the day it's sort of not worth getting to work and also that puts people off and that's not something we want to do put you off of becoming a bricklayer so to speak yeah no for, for, for sure but you know it's a really good consideration that you've got and then dan let me come back to you as well what's the most enjoyable part of your job the most enjoyable uh, for me it's a sense of pride because once i've completed the piece of work I stand back and I look at it and think, cool, I've done that. And that's going to be there for many years to come. Like I could go always go by there and see, oh, I've done that bit of work, I've done that bit. And that's the bit that most fulfilling to me, the sense of pride I get from completing the work. Yeah. And are you working by yourself a lot of the time or are you you working in a team? I'm working well, most most of the time you work together in one panel, one stretch. And I'm working next to bricklayers who've been in, in, in the industry years. So I'm learning off people who you should need to learn off to know the best things on what to do in situations, stuff like that. Yeah, okay. And then we'll flip question for you then. What's challenging, what's difficult that perhaps people may not understand or be aware of before they get into it? Well, um, obviously most of the time bricklaying is outside. So sometimes in the winter, it can get a bit cold, but it's not it's not the worst i don't find it too bad i always think you can always put on an extra jump or whatever and just crack on with it but uh, another thing is sometimes you could run out of work but the way the industry is going at the moment the industry is just booming so there's always going to be work out there that people are crying out for bricklayers at the moment yeah for sure for sure okay um jack i mean anything that you want to add just to set the scene perhaps for what a bricklayer i mean it's, it's i guess it sounds obvious that you're laying bricks but Tell us a little bit more about that process. Um, I think to add, I think that's a really general term that we that is just sort of the to the un, not to the untrained person, Gareth, but just to look at normally what does a bricklayer do? It's normally the common sense that you just think a bricklayer just lays bricks, just lays blocks. However, highly, both highly and Dan will understand this. The duties of a bricklayer are getting bigger and bigger. What was considered an ask of a bricklayer. 40, 50 years ago today would be really, really easy going to what is probably expected of a guy like Dan, who's an inspiring bricklayer, probably going into a supervisor's role. 
So you're, you've got to be expected, first of all, that the key thing is to be able to, like Dan says, he's working with a gang. So you're working with a small number of individuals and you have to be able to communicate effectively with other individuals. So having um, good communication skills, also being an organised individual, like Dan says, getting up at five o'clock, half five, to make sure you're on site, make sure you're self-motivated enough to be on site for that time. Because you're going into an industry where it is hard working. There is a lot of demand behind it, but as Dan's pointed out really well, there's a lot of pride behind what you do. You're, you're contributing to an industry that has been around for hundreds and thousands of years, um, as far back as you want to go, and people were you know, building their own homes you know, with, with stone. You're going back into an industry that's always been around, uh, and that's something to always be proud of. And like, like Dan says, I think, having that sort of motivation to get yourself up, get yourself out there, um, being able to not be afraid to ask questions um, if you're unsure of something is, is that sort of intrinsic and uh, that evaluative mind of a bricklayer of going, is this, you know, is this the right way to do it? Should there be another way to do it? So having that sort of high level thinking, I think that's a really, really good skill for a bricklayer. What's typically demanded, um, like we just said, is uh, the other level is good customer care is uh, being able to support customers, whether that be through a large brickland company, subcontractor like Logical Brickwork, or maybe um, a small sort of smaller brickland company, maybe two or three guys with an apprentice, being able to not lose that quality of customer care um, is something that's quite, kind of overlooked. Because a lot of people think of bricklayers, they don't have to deal with the customers, they just have to put up walls for people and they just get paid and then that's it. But it's having that longevity of where's your reputation going to go and that could be that reputation of like i said the small brickman company or like dan he's contributing to the reputation of which what brick work for the longevity of them winning winning contracts and winning jobs in and around the great london area so i think there's there's so much that's demanded um of brick on the day today yeah okay now thank you for helping to set the scene a little bit just going to move the conversation on now and before i do. Let me just remind those of you that are watching this live at the moment, you do have the opportunity to ask some questions to our panellists, um, so to either to Heidi, to Jack or to or to Dan. So anything that you want to know, anything that we've touched on that you want to know a little bit more about or you want to clarify, open up the questions tab on your dashboard, type your question in, it's only going to be visible to me and then I can make sure that we ask that question to them. Um, next section of questions then, is I really wanted to find out a little bit more about the qualifications that someone may need. Um, and the, look, I mean, first of all, Jack, let me ask you this question. Why is it important that someone has a qualification to do Brick Lane? Because I, I, you know, I know of people that have maybe seen and had good exposure to building sites because they've got family members or, or, or friends that do the work, and maybe think, well, I can do that. Why do I need a qualification? Was you asking me, or Jack? I was, I was asking Jack, but he's, just, look, he's temporarily frozen. So let me ask you that I, question, Heidi, because I, I think it's important. Like. Sorry, Gab. Um, yeah, I think your connection is a bit. Yeah, fine. Let me, let me, I'm going to. I'm going to ask Heidi <laughs> to have a go at that one first. Then, so Heidi, so why is it important? In, have in terms of us employing someone, we would, as well as the site as well, every site would require a CSCS card. So without any qualifications, there's no way to gain a CSCS card. Um, in terms of, say, being a labourer or if you're an apprentice on site, you can do the one day health and safety course and then do your test and get on site. But in terms of being a bricklayer, because sites are now more site specific on their CSCS cards, they won't allow a bricklayer on site if they do not have the correct blue card or even gold card. Sure, okay. that's a very concise answer there. So you can only work legally on a building site if you have the qualification. So therefore it brings in the college. So Jack, can you tell us a little bit about the qualifications that you offer at Hartford Regional College? Absolutely. Um, so um, as Heidi said, we support the qualifications that directly support the CSCS card that is needed by apprentices to work on site, needed by bricklayers, needed by carpenters, etc., to work on site. So in the bricklaying um, industry, when you come in, you're introduced to it, regardless of your maths and English levels, you will be introduced to it at level one, um, or as I would call it, year one. We go through year one and year two here at Hartford College. So at year one, you will be introduced to the bricklaying industry. 
um, you would undertake as part of that qualification health and safety test to support, as Heidi said, the CSCS uh, role that's needed for a bricklayer to work on site. There would be the understanding of just general constructing brickwork, constructing block work, constructing cavity walling as well. So cavity walling makes up about 80% of what we have in our in housing within the UK if we take into the into account the other 20 percent which is anything that's sort of pre-1920 that wouldn't have a cavity wall in it. Um, so you have a thorough understanding of that. You would also have an understanding of what we call the construction industry. So the principles of construction of taking a house and uh, the obviously the, the planning of that house going forward, the underpinning of that house, so the foundations, we can't build anything without good foundations. So building a house with the foundation up all the way up to the top of the roof and all the information that is required for that. Um, you would then move on to level two, where the skills would be further stretched. You would then start looking at decorative brickwork, uh, solid brickwork, looking at garden walls. You're then also looking at arch work, um, some very decorative, decorative stuff that bricklayers would be asked to undertake. That is, is currently undertaking something in our workshop, which is a lovely piece of work, which is supporting what he's doing on site. Um, what we try to do after you've completed level one as a full time learner here at Hartford Regional College, what we like all of our learners obviously to do is, in part of that, is actually get themselves in contact with the employer for their second year to prepare them. Um, we like to get learners out into the industry as quickly as possible because what you've got there is you've got learners that are on site four days a week, exactly the same stand, and they're coming back here one day a week to support uh, the training that they need to push them up to what uh, I referenced before, which is the blue card, which is a full skilled worker that is working on a construction site. Once they've completed their level two um, as an apprentice, there's normally we, we like a little bit of um, experience to be gained by a learner, sort of one to two years on site, sort of just learning the ins and outs of that bricklaying job. Um, and while they're doing that, like highly referenced um, earlier, there might be some training courses that the employer might nominate them for. And one of them could be what's called the Triple STS, which is a site supervisor scheme that uh, you can get certification for, and it's learning about that site supervisor's level and really seeing where your career can go. And then coming back to college to undertake your level three, your MBQ level three, which is an advanced class course. So that's the range of courses that we offer here at the college. Sure, and I'll just make sure I get this out there, because people will be watching this and they'll come from all parts of Hertfordshire. So Hertford Regional College, you're down, at, that's the campus down in, in Turnford? It is in Turkfany Broxbourne, yeah, really easy to be located from the A10 through two major stations, be it Chesham or Broxbourne, there's some really good public gigs for transport here as well. Yeah, for sure. so I've done a bit of research because there are three other FE colleges within, within Hertfordshire, so just to give you some context, um, North Hearts College, which is based up in Stevenage or Hitchin, they offer a level one diploma in Brick Lane. West Hearts <laughs> College over in Watford, they offer a level one in construction skills and trail tool trades, um, and that you could then do a level two diploma in bricklaying. Oakland's College over in St Albans, they offer a level one, but that's for 19 year olds, and that's as a part time course. Um, but yeah, so Hartford Regional, if that feels accessible to you down in, down in Turnford, um, then you know, really, really good program and really good connections. And I'm sure that the other colleges in Hertfordshire as well will also have really good employer links as well. Um, so Jack, you obviously, I know you, you get a huge number of applications for your courses every year. So mm -hmm. what is it you're looking for? So typically they will come from current year 11 students who yeah. are just about to do their GCSEs. What is it that you want to see or, for, or know about them uh, before you would accept them onto a course? Are there any qualifications or GCSE subjects they'd need to have? Absolutely. I, I should imagine that any year 10 and year 11 learner that's at school would have heard this time and time again. Um, but the biggest subjects that we normally look for is um, the passing or grade four in English and maths. That's not to say that we wouldn't um, look at an applicant who didn't have a grade four in English and maths, but being able to achieve them at school just makes your life at college or the journey at college a lot more enjoyable because you're able to focus solely on that vocational area of bricklaying. It means that um, you're able to take up the opportunities like Dan did, which is um, he finished his uh, GCSE and finished his A-level from school before he comes to college so he can fully support 
um, the career that he wants to move into, and that's part of his maths and English. It doesn't mean that we don't support it in the classroom or in the practical area, because as Dan will probably witness, we do a lot of work, obviously, brick work is, is maths and English through and through. We need those vital, um, well, I wouldn't even call them soft skills, I call them very key skills, but you need to become a brick player. You need a high understanding of English and maths. Uh, you need to be able to communicate with your peers, other trades and customers, be able to read certain documents as well. So all again, all of these things we would look for. Um, we would do an initial assessment. So in the first six weeks, we would look at and make sure there's there's always a six week window to make sure that every learner that comes is, is happy they're on the right course. Um, and normal indication is if you're happy that you're on the right course, you attend fully. Um, so it's normally high attendance, but we would look at in the first six weeks. Um, I'm pleased to say that within the construction area here at Hartford Regional College, the brick laying area has the highest attendance. So we have a high attendance, so I have 40 learners on level one brick laying, and the average attendance across the course is 93%. So it's looking at that above 90% attendance um, that shows to me that you are dedicated, this is definitely a journey you want to go on. Um, you also, when you're coming from school, I think there's a really good opportunity that if you're in year 11, start expressing that interest in bricklaying or be construction and start having that conversation if, if it's available to you with your careers advisor. If there's some work experience places that you can, you can get onto, definitely take full advantage of those. Um, or even sort of if you've got someone who's in the family or close family friend who works in the industry, go along, find out what the industry's all about, get a little bit of experience for them. Uh, it can only be positive and it's only going to help making your choice when you leave school it easier. Yeah, I, I want to ask Dan a question based on something you've just said there, Jack, because you've spoken about the application of English and maths and why they're important. <laughs> Dan, can you give any, perhaps any really recent examples of why having some really good math skills has helped you whilst you're actually out at work? Well, uh, like Jack said, maths and English is very key for Britlow and math because you're always dealing with heights, gauges, uh, uh, measurements, always using a tape measure. So it's all key skills. You're using numbers throughout the day. Sometimes you're using numbers and don't even realise it. So you've really got to have a good understanding of numbers. And to like you've got to communicate with people you work with, li liaise with other trades, and you're going to need a good level of English for that also. Yeah, OK. And then, Heidi, if I can ask you a question, how does the apprenticeship aspect of this work? So your perspective as an employer, do the do the students go to, to Jack at the college first or do they come to you? It all depends. So we've um we've done it both ways. We've had students straight up school come directly to us, um, and then we've had Jack refer us students. So it, it works either way because obviously we've just got such a great relationship with Hartford Regional, we just, all of us take it on and we we go whatever way we can to get the student the best opportunity that we can. So Jack um, obviously has a lot of students already. So when, when it comes to applying, I think Hartford Regional are quite um, accommodating on accepting students that have not yet applied if that makes sense so we've had a few that yeah. we've maybe moved from previous college onto one of jack's courses yeah is that making sense <laughs> so yeah, what i'm no. trying to get at is that if if it's something that someone wants to do as an employer and as a college i think we're all very accommodating in terms of getting people to where they want to be yeah and look, from your perspective as an employer what do you want to see in someone so if someone's 16 you know they haven't had any previous work so they've just finished school what would you want to, them to what sort of skills or qualities would you want them to have i think someone who wants to do it someone who wants to go into construction bricklaying whatever it may be the first step is going directly to the employer or the college or doing it yourself because I think it's easy at that age for um, kids, students, whatever we call them, um, to get their mums or dads or whoever it is to do it for them. So I think once they get past that stage and then they do it for themselves, that's when they 
that's when they become, I think, appealing and you think, wow, they, they are interested. They really do want to do it. And obviously, as Dan said, it's early mornings and it's hard work. So they've got to be willing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, OK. Um, right, going to move the conversation on. Jack, is there anything, anything that someone might be, you said about getting experience or just perhaps going to visit someone who's, who forms interesting what the site looks like. Are there any other skills that people might have that might make them really good in this industry? I, I think the, um, the, one of the key skills which is overlooked is being able to work well as part of the team. I think um, anything that you, you might be doing at school that might contribute to that, whether you're and that's necessarily part of the football team, part of the rugby team, the athletic team. It shows that you are able to be contributing towards a team, which is exactly what we're playing is. Um, it's extremely difficult to build a house completely on your own or start your own brick company completely on your own. You need the support of others, um, like so many other industries. And I think one of the things that's over the top, I've had many, many learners that have come to me from school that have uh, achieved their bronze, silver, or even gold in the Duke of Edinburgh, for example. Um, a skill that um, it was previously looked at, that was, oh yeah, it was kind of really fluffy, you go camping, you do this, but it's then sort of key underpinning skills that um, under pressure and under planning, you need to be able to show that you can act as part of the team and you can get yourself to where you need to go. And that's exactly what we try to do here at the college. We uh, have countless examples of where we've taken uh, young people that may have come into the construction industry. Um, and I wanted to make a, a brief point on what you said earlier, Gavin, about you know, there is a, like you said, there's other colleges that offer the level one construction. Uh, we offer that here at Hartford Regional College. So it's the level one construction skills course. Um, and that allows learners to take advantage of bricklaying, carpentry, plumbing, and electrical. Um, and while they're supporting their GCSEs, I want to make that really clear. So if for any reason you you know you don't achieve your four in English and maths at school, that, that possibility is not a possibility. That course is open to you to be able to come from Hartford Regional College, um, continue and show your interest in the construction industry and gain some very, very vital health and safety. And while you're doing that, hopefully support you passing your English and maths. Um, and then once they're complete or you complete that course, you can then come up to, into a trade specific pathway and i think that's really important that it's it's an industry um that people shouldn't, shouldn't frown on and go oh it's an industry you just go to if you have no mass in english that is certainly not the case and i think that's becoming even more apparent with the um the opportunities that are open to to young people i mean i had a conversation earlier with one of my learners um, to find out that believe it or not it's actually being paid more than i am a day um, and that's quite an eye opener, and it's quite a, a privilege when I spoke to Dan like, about you know sort of in, in different bits and pieces because he does come up as part of. We do look at learners' reviews and we look at how they're being treated um, by the employers. We never stop looking after them, and that's and that's a, a key thing. The opportunities that are there, um, as Dan said earlier, it's an industry to be part of. And um, I'm going to be very biased and turn around and say that the bricklaying is the best part of the construction industry, but that's uh, that's easy to say when Dan has to get out of five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay. Um, next couple of questions I wanted to ask you. So there's a couple of questions that have come in as well. So I want to make sure that we go through those. If you haven't asked a question yet, there's something you really, really want to know or you want to clarify, please drop your question in on the on the questions tab. Then I can make sure that Jack, Dan, or Heidi are able to answer those. Um, I'm going to go to you first of all for this one, Heidi. You said that you've got lots of jobs on at the moment is this a good industry to go into is there lots of is there good job security is there lots of demand for bricklayers at the moment i think um it's probably the highest demand for bricklayers there's never a time when we are not looking for bricklayers um obviously we are all also looking for laborers and maybe insulators and everything else that goes with that but I think bricklaying is the biggest thing that I, I mean people people struggle looking for bricklayers and and being able to find them and that's why the rates just go up and up so eventually once you get to that point and as Jack said what what you can be earning goes above quite a lot of jobs that maybe you've gone to uni for and and studied for four or five years and it does just get passed off as, oh, I'll just do it because it's nothing else. But I think maybe there's not enough 
information on how much you can earn and how much you can go like you can go far with it and what you can do with it yeah well let me bring dan in at this point uh, dan what what do you see do you what do you see your prospects being do you want to be a bricklayer and, and do that for the next 30, 40 years, or is there a career route that you want to take having started as a bricklayer? Uh, so I've started as a bricklayer, but I've, I have aspirations of climbing up the ladder. So I want to become a supervisor, charger, and then a foreman. And then once I, the foreman roles fulfilled me, see if they did like site management or health and safety. But this all stems from starting by doing bricklaying. So if you don't, you've got to start somewhere and then work your way up sometimes. But there's still loads of opportunities out there. Yeah, sure. And then, I mean, Jack, from your perspective, is is brick lane a good gateway to get into the construction industry, or do you find that people tend to want to continue as brick layers? Um, I, I would, like I said before, be advised. I'd say it's the best way to get into the construction industry, just because there is a sense of uh, craft craftsmanship behind it. There is a sense of fulfillment, like Dan mentioned earlier, being very, very proud of the work that you achieve. Um, I've got, like I said, I've got countless examples. I've had learners that started out as level one bricklayers that have ended up as site managers for um, some of the biggest construction companies in the, in the country. Um, I've had learners that work with which were brickwork, which are now site supervisors that are running jobs um, and they're, they build themselves up. Um, from not that long ago being at college, I can still remember when they, they were coming to college as fresh faces as Um I've got other examples where I've had learners that have come and completed level one and level two bricklaying and gone with a, a big subcontractor sub, uh, sub and then branched off and started their own company and are actually coming back to us now to get apprentices from us. So there's that whole journey of a, a learner starting at half the regional college going off and fulfilling their apprenticeship, having a few years to gain that vital knowledge that they need and then branching off to start their own company and returning to the college that they started at because they know it's a good college that they can come back to and trust to make sure that they're continuing that journey of offering another young person an opportunity to get into the industry and I think it's fantastic. Yeah, sounds So those were the formal questions I wanted to ask you. So we're going to hand over to those questions that we've had in the audience. There have been a couple that have come in here. So I'm going to put you on the spot because you may not know. You, you haven't prepared for these questions that have come in yet, but you may, may know them. So the first one, I think it's a really relevant question, is how much do I get paid as a bricklayer? Um, I don't know who to ask that one first. I'm going to go to Jack and then um, Heidi can gather some figures together. OK. Um, I'm just going to just ask the question Gareth just because obviously you're the you're the only person that kind of isn't in the industry how much would you expect to be paid as a bricklayer a day how much would I expect to get paid as a bricklayer a day um yeah. oh you put me on the spot now that's not fair no, no. um I'm meant to be the one asking the questions um let me so say how much it's... would you be expected to learn uh, earn as an apprentice uh, not a fully, okay. fully qualified bricklayer how much would you expect to be earning as an apprentice? Uh, as an apprentice, I think I'd get forty pounds a day. Okay. Yeah. Well, the starting rate as the apprentice is sixty pound a day, so that is quite good. Okay. So if you're starting off. So sixty pound a day compared to other apprenticeships that are out there. So you're you're then looking at three hundred quid a week. Um, a lot of my apprenticeships start between two hundred fifty and three hundred pounds a week, and I do know that a lot of my level three apprentices can earn anywhere from one hundred eighty to two hundred and ten, two hundred twenty pounds a day as a, a level three apprentice. Um, once fully qualified, um, high, you might be able to help with maybe the fully qualified after. Uh, I think rates. Um, at the moment, obviously, as I said, they fluctuate. At the moment, when there's a high demand for bricklayers, I think we're going two twenty a day for a bricklayer, and then obviously you've got charge hands two fifty. And if I'm honest, it just goes up and up, doesn't it? The more the more experience, the more qualifications you have, the more you get paid, the more appealing it becomes. And now we're all wondering why we're not bricklayers. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so some information I can share to answer that question. So you might remember right at the top of the um, webinar, I mentioned that 
the portal we want you all to have a look at is called the HOP portal, that stands for the Hertfordshire Opportunities Portal. So I'm going to show you that on the screen at the moment and subject to it lagging, I'm going to show you how you might use this to find out this sort of information. So that's the, that's your, hum, your front page there, so it's hopinto.co.uk. So when you're on this screen, on that front page, um, if you were to click on Explore Careers, and then have a look at careers directory. You can type in any job you can think of here and it will give you a bit of information. So if I type in bricklayer in there, it brings up um, bricklayers and masons. So you mentioned about stone mason earlier, I think, Dan. So this will give you, this is very general. This isn't, this is national. So it, across the whole of England as opposed to Hertfordshire Pacific, but it will give you some more information about bricklayers and masons. So it can tell you that the average salary at 20 would be about just under 15,000 a year. The average salary for a bricklayer is just over 32,000, which I think is well above the national average salary, actually. Um, it'll tell you a little bit more about the job, which I'm sure will supplement the things that you've heard from our panels today. Um, and then it will tell you, um, now in Hertfordshire, I know that there is predicted increase so across nationally it's saying that there's a decline but i know in hertfordshire we expect there to be lots more jobs this also tells us that within the next six years we know that there are going to be about thirteen thousand bricklayers who are going to need to be replaced either because they're due to retire or because they're, they're, they're moving into different careers so there's going to be lots of opportunities there as well the other thing that hop does is it also gives you details of any live jobs that are available at the moment as a bricklayer or in this case as a stone mason as well so there is actually a, a live job at the moment um, for a company up in Bulldog. so do use hop it can be a really really useful tool for you to have a to have a look at um next question i came and thanks for the person who asked that question i didn't realize that it was going to put me on the spot as well but that's jack's fault perhaps more than yours um second question is i'm going to ask this one to heidi we've spoken about the apprenticeship routes and the one that dan's on at the moment but do you have to have done an apprenticeship to gain the qualifications to actually get a job and become employed as a bricklayer um I mean, maybe Jack's better answering that question, but I can tell you that 50% of our workforce, which when you mention there's 13,000 people that are soon to retire, I would imagine all of the ones that are um, sort of just when they, they came up on experience and have never done any sort of qualifications or anything, but it's not that simple anymore. I think you, don't really have the option you definitely have to have the qualifications have i gone off the question because now i've forgotten what you've asked me gareth sorry yeah. now the, the question was do you have to have done an apprenticeship um to become employed or can you still gain those qualifications oh no elsewhere? i think yeah no i definitely think jack's gonna have to answer that question but i think you can still do the qualifications um maybe diploma side of it jack yeah, absolutely. So yes, you could um, you could come to college as a full-time learner, um, which would get you through your level one and level two diploma here at Hartford Regional College, and that's 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 similar for most of the colleges within Hertfordshire, I should imagine. However, to get a full understanding of the industry and a full understanding of what roles and what bricklayer does, um, you need to be out there in the industry. There's no there's no point to because like I was saying, kind of said earlier, regarding the CSCS card. Um, it's only going to get you so far before you're recognised. You will not be able to be recognised as what you call a skilled operative or a skilled tradesperson until you have passed an apprenticeship in Britain, uh, which can only lead on to you then becoming an advanced tradesperson. Uh, we talked about the CSCS blue card earlier, so the CSCS blue card is for skilled operatives, and then you would be, once you complete your advanced class or level three, you would then get a gold card which would recognise that you are an advanced operative within bricklaying or an advanced class person. So the long and short answer is yes, you do need to uh, achieve an apprenticeship to be able to really succeed in this industry. Um, and that you can do it by passing the bricklaying diploma, but you also be best to your apprenticeship. Sure. Okay, thank you. Um, another question here. It's a question I would have wanted to ask, actually. Do you have to be good with your hands to be a bricklayer and do you have to be strong and physically capable? Let me ask, well, let me ask Dan that question to start with. Well, um, 
I'll be honest, both people say to me that I'm uh, very cack handed, but somehow I'm de- I'm work- I work with my hands and I've been told I do well, I'm good at what I do and that I'm improving every day. So no, you do have to be good with your hands in some sense, but most skills you learn coming to college, like within the first few weeks as a level level one learner, they teach you how to spread the mark, what to do with the brick. So, and then it's just building up that skill over and over again. So you do not, they teach you what you need to know at college. And sure. uh, you, you're always on your feet all day, don't get me wrong, yeah. But it's something as like that you can build up in a sense. If you start from a young age, you can build it up and get better at it. The way you would get better at Brickland. Yeah. Okay. So, so Jack, from your, you're not looking for someone with really fine, you know, motor skills who's really no. good with their their hand. That's something you can teach. That's that's the idea. You, at the end of the day, you can teach a skill. You can teach bricklaying, um, and that's what we we encourage young people to get into. You're getting into industry that requires a lot of repetitiveness. Repetitiveness um, that you're going to go into college. You're going to go end up with that employment. Go to the college and that employer will teach you the skills you need. What we can't teach is enthusiasm. We can't. T- we can try and hone motivation. We can hone some of the skills that we need, the communication skills, the Latin English. But it's that motivation inside you, that intrinsic, what we call intrinsic motivation, that needs to come from you. Uh, is this definitely a career I want to go into? It's a bit like anything else. Um, if you if you're not going to enjoy something, um, you're not going to keep up with it. If you, for example, um, skiing lessons are a prime example. If, if a lot of people take up skiing lessons. I took up skiing lessons. Really wanted to go on a skiing holiday, but couldn't ski for because I didn't enjoy it. Um, and it just came down to it was something else I needed to do. Switch to uh, something else which was snowboarding and really enjoyed that, so I saw it through. Um, and it's like anything else. Like I come back to that sport aspect of school. If you've picked up a sport that you really enjoy. And you're taking it through. You're going to excel in that. It's no different to a triathlon. Well. Yeah. Okay, but I've got two more questions to come up. If anyone else has got any more questions, do put them in there. It's probably your last opportunity to ask any more that you've that you've got. Um, so this one, this was, sounds a bit mischievous, but I'm going to ask you anyway, Dan. Um, what's the highest wall you've been able to build in a day? The highest wall. Yeah. Well, um, it depends. It depends uh, what the job role is, because sometimes you're working on a scaffold lift and they're there's there's six meter scaffold lift so you can only go so high bearing in yeah. um whether it be, it could be something else like a garden wall say so it all rather depends like it, you've got to take into account what bricks you've got the the wetness of the mark it all it all depends but i'd say about a meter and a half two two meters you could probably okay. up, get up yeah fine and I mean, how would you measure how effective someone is and maybe anyone can answer this question actually is it um how many physically how many bricks you can lay that takes into account how wide or, or tall the wall is going to be how do you know if you've got a really good brick layer let me or Heidi I think Jack will have to back me up because I'm not even a brick layer but you can just look at people's work and you just know it's good and I mean, yeah, if you absolutely. Google house builders in the UK bad brickwork, you'll know what I mean. <laughs> um, absolutely. I, th- I think it comes down to the quality more than the quantity, 100%. Um, we, I've said it to many learners before. If I have a learner that's in a two to three hour practical session, um, it, depending on the task that they're doing, like Dan says, um, as long as they are trying their hardest and they're, they're focusing on that quality, they could realistically only lay 30, 35, 40 bricks in that two, three hour session. But if they're 30, 45 bricks are on something that's quite, needs a lot of focus and it's absolutely spot on with quality, then that's all the employer's going to be looking for. It does come down to that quality of work, 100%. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the final question, this one's very much for you, Jack, is. When do applications open for your college courses? Okay, so applications are open currently for next year as well. Uh, we have an open evening coming up on the 2nd of November um, that you're more than welcome to come along to. There will be two demonstrations taking part on that evening. Um, I think I'll be nominated to do the vote for Brickwork, so there will be demonstrations. Um, if you have got any other questions, like Gareth was saying, if you don't manage to get the chance to ask some questions, please feel free to come along. Applications happen throughout the year. 
we normally we enrol in September. However, pre-application and pre-enrollment, we like to engage with people as much as possible. So similar to this webinar, we, we may do online um, open e-learning events. So uh, similar for this, we use Microsoft Teams, where we would go into details about what we're going to do now. So we can make sure we're keeping in contact with people that are interested in everything. Okay, and um, so your open day, so it's at the Turnford campus on yeah. the 2nd of November, which is Tuesday after half term, isn't it? And Tuesday so, after half term, yeah. yeah. I, believe but, and, I believe it's five, five in the evening to eight in the evening, I believe. But okay, five in the evening. That, that's it. And, well, I, I know because I've been there, and I, I dare say I'll, I'll come and see you when I finish this in about 20 minutes yet. Yeah. But it's a, it's, a, it's a really inspiring venue or location that you've got for your students to learn the trade, isn't it, over there? At... It's, it certainly is. It's, um, without being biased, I would say it's definitely one of the best, if not the best in the UK. Uh, that's down through amazing support that we've had from the guys at Mitchell Brickwork, working really closely with them. We've got some components down there that I know for a fact we've got really young companies in the UK that have their components to give learners a skill set they don't need to support their careers like that. For sure. Okay. So look, finally, then just to wrap up, I don't think there's any more questions that have come come through. Um, just wanted to make you aware of some some websites that you might want to have a look at if this is this is still piqued your interest. Um, now I've learned how to apply a QR code to a website. So in theory, and I have tested these out by clicking the QR code next to the logo, it will take you to that website. So I. The, brick, the one at the top is for Winchmore Brickworks. So if you wanted to find out about the company that um, Heidi works for and that Dan is working for as well at the moment, uh, click on that QR code. It will take you through to Winchmore Brickworks website and you can find out a little bit more about them. Uh, down in the bottom right corner, that is the QR code that will take you straight through to um, this section on the Hearts Regional College website. So if you want to find out more about the course, and I'm sure that the open day will be listed on there as well, um, then go to that one. The other website that I put on there as well is called Go Construct, which is a website which is aimed at young people who want to find out about the construction industry as a whole. And it will tell you a little bit about the different job roles within that, of which bricklaying is, of course, one of them. Is Go Construct a website you're familiar with, Jack? It is, yeah, it's a website that we use for resources uh, for when we're doing learning. One more that's also on there, Gareth, which I did inform you about, which I'm really sorry, is we actually have our own Instagram page, um, which is HRC Brickwork. It's really easy to find. Um, and on there we do uh, timeline videos, so we do, um, what, what's the word I'm thinking about when it's on? On that live stories. stories. Yeah, we do live sessions on there. We do story updates at Monday through to Friday for our learners. Uh, we've tried to obviously feature as much content as we can. We also are going to be definitely doing more live events uh, and also how to do videos on there as well to keep people engaged. Okay, and then finally from me, so it's just to share with you again the um, the links through to the hop site so on our hop site this is the 36th one of these webinars that we've recorded um in the last 18 months or so so we, we we talk about a different career and a different industry every week we've done webinars about careers in construction and engineering as well that may be of relevance for you but if you click on that qr code that you've got in front of you now um you'll find all of our virtual encounters pages um, with all the videos such as include like the one we've included today so you may well find there are other careers that you want to find out about or you've got family or friends that may want to find out about them so do share those with those with them as well so finally let me just thank you first of all those of you that have attended live today and have submitted your questions i hope you found this really informative and hopefully hope you found it really inspiring as well and that you now know what your next steps are going to be uh, to pursue a career in bricklaying and you may well come across jack dan and heidi in the years to come um, but finally let me thank our panelists so to jack dan and to heidi for giving up their time um, not just for this hour but in preparation for this session as well to make sure that they could really bring to life this industry for you so thanks so much to the three of you for joining us today um, um, we hope you've enjoyed it and best of luck with your future studies and your career exploration. Thanks ever so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.